Welcome to MHF for You Grade 12 Function Section 1.2. Today we'll be exploring the absolute value function. So first of all, what is the absolute value? So by definition, f of x is equal to absolute value of x, so the two lines mean the absolute value. And on a number line, this function describes the distance f of x from any number x on the origin. Okay. So in this number line here, we can see their origin, otherwise known as zero. Um, and we can see that we have these two arrows pointing out from the origin, right? One is reaching negative 3, one is reaching positive 3. And that for both of these arrows, they're, they're three units away from the origin, right? So the emphasis here is on how many units away it is from the origin. And we see that this, you know, the three units is always positive throughout, right? And so that's why the absolute value function is always positive, is because we are looking at a distance. Okay, so once we know that, um, the reason behind it, it's pretty straightforward to calculate. So as we see here, we have a table of values, and you know, you put in your whether x is equal to negative one or zero or one, you also have a positive output from that. And we also have our graph. So this graph might actually look kind of familiar to you because you might think that, well, doesn't it look kind of like two linear functions crossed? And you're absolutely right if you think that. Um, so this is actually one part of the function is that. Um, one part of the definition of a function is that the graph is comprised of two linear functions and is defined as follows. So we have f of x can equal x if x is greater than or equal to zero, right? So again, you can see that this line, this line right here, it looks a lot like y is equal to x. Um, and then this line here looks a lot like y is equal to negative x. And um, so that's how you get your definition of the function. Uh, depending on whether x is positive or negative, it will then follow the rules of either linear function, right? But the important thing to consider here is that because we're dealing with absolute value, you'll never actually get a negative value in your output. Okay, so then let's look at some important parts of this graph, adding on to that. Um, so there's one zero located at the origin, which we know. The graph is comprised of two linear functions. We talked about that. Uh, the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. So if I draw my axis of symmetry here, we'll see that then um, if I were to fold this graph over that the two lines um, of the function would match up. Um, as x approaches large positive values, y approaches large positive values. So basically we're saying here that, you know, no matter how big x keeps getting, no matter how big x keeps getting, y will also keep getting equally big. And similarly, no matter how small x gets here, y will keep getting big as well. Okay. And the absolute value function has domain, x is element of the reals. And, y, and range y is on to the real such that y is greater than or equal to zero. So here, obviously, since y is positive, no matter how, you know, no matter what x value I put in, um, it will always keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more and more positive. Okay. And every input in an absolute value returns an output that is non-negative. We know that. All right. So now it's time for some examples. So first of all, arrange these values in order from least to greatest. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the first step is just to take the values out of the absolute value, and then once you do that, arrange them, which I've done. All right, so the second one is talking about graphing the following functions. So here we see we have our, you know, our parent function we know is absolute value of x, looks like this, and then important thing here, we'll talk about transformations in more detail in the future, but for now, you know, if the, if the change is inside the bracket, that means it's a horizontal transformation, and if it's outside the bracket, that means it's a vertical transformation. So part A, we're dealing with a horizontal transformation. And the way I, look to, I like to do these is you want to find the value of x that will make your f of x 0, right? So here I know if I put in x is equal to 2, then my overall f of x will then become 0. And that's how we know we're dealing with a horizontal translation, right two units. Okay, so let's look at the graph then. So you can see then, um, compared to your original function, that now we have the graph starting at x is equal to 2. And everything else is remaining the same because we haven't made any other changes. We've only changed where the graph originates from. All right. So now for part B, we have y is equal to absolute value of x plus 2. And this is a vertical translation up two units. Um, pretty straightforward. So then here what we do is we change the origin to y is equal to 2. The origin of the function to y is equal to 2. And there's no other changes because um, the vertical translation is the only change we've made. Perfect. Okay, so that's pretty much it for absolute value functions for now. We will go into more detail about transformations in the future um, and how we can have multiple transformations to a function. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us on our website. And thank you for watching.